Good morning, everyone. My name is Thomas Alkalibic. I'm a senior technical specialist here at Autodesk Australia. Um, and we I had a, a query from a, a client before asking about some of the differences um, that you can have between working in Revit uh, and Advanced Steel. So I've got Revit here open um, with a grid, just a 20 by 20 meter grid. I've also got Advanced Steel. So we're gonna show what you can do in Revit going back to advanced steel and, and back and forth uh, and plus as well the, the extra capabilities that you have inside advanced steel in more so in regards to the detailing phase. So what I'm going to do is um, just on level one here I'm going to place a column and then on level two I'm going to do some beams. So we're going to have just a very basic structure. So on level one I'm going to draw a column and I'm going to leave it as a 310 UC98. It just happens to be there. Um, so the height, it's going up to level two. So when we place it uh, at the snap, at the grids, so what I'll do, I'm just showing you how it's getting placed and then we're gonna switch to the 3D view and I'll see, show you what it looks like. So if we jump to our 3D view, uh, there's our columns there. If we look at our building elevations, then you can see we're going from level one to level two on the eastern side. So that's on level one. On level two, we're gonna place some beams and you can see here where our level one to level two columns are. If I wanna look at them in more detail, I can switch to fine mode. You can see we've got those, those elements there. I can look at them wireframe, shaded, realistic or even rendered. So I'm just gonna put it back to wireframe. Now we're gonna put in some beams, 310 UBs. So again, I can just snap to each grid point and you can see Revit's cleaned it up a little bit but we're not really too concerned about that at the moment because what we're going to do is do some connections between all of those anyway so okay so if we switch to a 3D view then you can see there we've got our beams I'll just turn my analytical model off and switch it to shaded. Okay, so there's there's our members there. If we happen to come into our elevation and make that 15 meters, then you can see obviously because we've told the columns to go between level one and level two, whatever happens to level two, it becomes 15 meters. So, What's happened in Revit in the last year or so, we've added connections. So for Revit 2017, we have 22 odd connections in there, some base plates, some corner base plates, some apex haunches, clip angle shear plates. So I'm going to add base plates and I'm going to add shear plates to this model. So now what it means is if I pick this column and I go to structure, connection, it puts in a generic connection, but it also gives me access to the base plate, which is something that will work with this item. Okay. So there's there's our base plate and I can go through and adjust. So the, if I modify the parameters, I can turn around and say, let's do the base plate anchors, parallel. So let's make it 200. Okay, in one direction and 200 in the other. So you can see our, our bolts sit in there nicely. So let's do one of the other ones up here. So same thing, pick the two objects that we want to connect, go to structure, go to connection, gives me a generic, but it allows me to do a shear plate and then it'll go through and do a shear plate connection for it. Okay, um, so let's do the same with the other side. Pick the two, structure, connection, shear plate and then there it is so if we want to switch it we can pick the connection go to modify parameters ok 
okay put, go to the plate plate layout say left or right you can see it switches it over to the right hand side so like I said there's 22 connections inside Revit um, for the translation between Revit to Advanced Steel to work with these connections the connections have to start um, inside Revit so we've got our three connections there so I'm just going to save this model and then if you've got the add-in installed the Advanced Steel add-in we can export it out so I'm going to export it out as an advanced format click OK put it under there as, an, as the SMLX file and now we can jump into advanced steel I'm going to zoom out a little bit go to my export import and import that change that SMLX file oops sorry import not export And then you can see there, there's our base plate that we did. If I right click on it and go to advanced joint properties, and it gives me that similar dialog box, except now I have the option to save that to a library, even look at the joint design for it. So you can see there's that 200. What I might do is just to show 300 in both directions. Go back down to 250. So it just means that now, okay, so it's still a little bit out of whack. Let's go back down to 220. Okay, so we've changed our base plate. find where those connections have gone here they are so same thing pick the item advanced joint properties okay fin plate so to make this interesting I'll make it box just to make the change okay and then we can do the same with the other one advanced joint properties and just for argument's sake we'll make that six make it six by two and place it in the middle so that means that now we've made changes we've imported items we haven't lost any properties so if I look at the events properties we still have 310 UB 32s uh, and all the items are in there so I'm just going to save this before we keep going so we still have our items there and I'm going to export this out as a second export file. And then we jump into Revit and we synchronize. So the synchronize function just means it's going to look at the deltas between the two. So I know the three connections have changed, so they're the ones I want to apply. You can see anything that's been appended, modified, or deleted. I'm going to apply all actions. And now if we look at our base plate, you can see the values have changed. So just to check that, modify parameters. And then see anchors parallel in, in one way are 300 and the other direction are 220, which is the changes that we made. So if we also look at our fin plates, you can see there we've got our 6x2 and our 3x3 three three, which is what we did in advanced steel so this also might pose questions in regards to why do it in one and the other Revit is not going to detail up these connections for you unless you start putting in cameras and views and callouts and sections and whatnot through these connections okay plus as well if I decide to make a schedule so if I do a new material takeoff let's do everything ok 
okay there are no plates there are no bolts okay so you're not going to get any of those items in your schedule so even if we did um, so I see nothing in the graphical column takeoff okay and again in just the multi-category schedule we do have the base plate and the shear plates but again no uh, no fasteners so it really I guess depends on, on what you want to do and achieve out of this the other one is like I said under structure and connections there's only 22 of them so you're not going to get all of the 200 that you do get inside advanced steel so to go into advanced steel the whole idea of this is it's still detailing so now that I've got this structure in here I can draw columns I can do views I can number everything so I'm not going to go into too much detail in regards to to how to, to model everything but um, you can see we've got three different types of connections there so the idea to get um, single part or assembly drawings out is I can process single parts and I can process assembly drawings assembly numbers and now we've got our um, part numbers for the assemblies and part numbers for all the single parts as well so the whole idea is under here we can start creating assembly drawings so if I say give me all assemblies between A3 to A1s I can say all MPs go OK and then what it's going to do in the background is create directories for me otherwise I can look in the document manager here go to my details and I can click on preview and it's going to show me the preview of those assemblies so if I look for one of the ones that is the column okay so if I go to open drawing then you can see there we've got that column there with our fin plates attached either side um, what we might do is just change the scale also let's make it one in one in ten and it's going to readjust plus as well we can turn around and have the software um, move and adjust things so I'm just going to pick this up and just move it down Okay, so there's the base plate of that column. We've got the welds, we've got the, the holes for the bolts, we've got all of the spacings, plus as well we, we've got other welds, and you can see there's our fin plates uh, attached and our base plates. So really, this is why you'd be doing advanced steel over Revit. So if we do the same thing for our single parts, So again it's just going to go away and give me single part drawings so what we can do now is I can click on that plate right click on it and say show me the part detail and it takes me to the, that uh, part detail for that again all of these title blocks and everything are out of the box but you can still customize that to suit so the extra benefit here is as well if I double click on that and let's change it to be three vertical bolts okay obviously it changes the connection it adds the new bolts but within the document manager here it tells me that that change has affected four files so I can force update or I can update the revision so if I update the revision I'll give it the next or the first revision and I can say connection changed click on OK and then what it's going to do is give me Rev A of those drawings and you can see there if I click on open drawing so that beam 
that's been affected by the change has been clouded plus as well we got the index the author the date and the description of what's happened there as well so hopefully this is given better insight in regards to the usage of Revit against advanced steel um, keep an eye on the YouTube channel for more videos on Revit and advanced steel structural detailing. Thank you.